This is Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller. Today, I'm with Jim Terrell, who's the Senior Director of Product Marketing at Transaction Network Services. Jim, thank you for joining me today. Doug, it's great great to be on your podcast. So first of all, what is Transaction Network Services? Great question. So Transaction Network Services, just like the name, it, 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 it connects communities of interest to process transactions in the payment, financial, and, and telecom industry. So if you're making a point-of-sale transaction or ATM or looking to, uh, you know, interact with the financial markets. That's what we do in the fintech space. In the telecom space, uh, Transaction Network Services, or TNS, um, we see over a, a billion call events daily and provide robocall detection to leading U.S. wireless and wireline carriers. In addition, we're working with aggregators and, and enterprises to help improve their brand experience. So, you know, from the robocall perspective, uh, you know, it's a nuisance and, and high risk on the consumer side, but there's also, you know, impacts to the enterprise and to the carriers um, on the call originator side as well. So we, we try to take a little bit of a balanced approach, uh, but, you know, um, you know, mostly work and, and sell to the, uh, sell to the carriers those robocall detection solutions. Well, Jim, this is a really ty- timely topic. It's a hot topic. Everyone's talking about robocalling. And maybe you can update our listeners on the latest carrier industry policy and legislative developments with robocalls that our listeners would want to know about. Yeah, sure. So the FCC has been pretty vocal uh, on several different fronts. Uh, they've asked for a call authentication framework called Stir Shaken. Um, strongly encouraged by Chairman Pai to the Tier 1s. In fact, he sent a letter to all of the, the Tier 1s asking them to uh, implement it and make progress on it this year. Uh, he's also, you know, sent letters to several Tier 2 and, and regional VoIP carriers to help uh, cooperate in the traceback efforts uh, to curb illegal spoofing. Um, in addition, Commissioner Rosenworcel has urged Tier 1 carriers to provide free robocalling blocking tools to, to their subscribers. So lots kind of going on on, the, on, on that front. In, specifically in the, in the Senate, uh, there's the TRACE Act, um, and TRACE Act that's been introduced that I think calls for similar uh, call authentication framework methodologies to be adopted within 12 to 18 months of the, of the passage of the Act, in addition in the House. There's a stopping bad robocalls. Um, in fact, there's there's at least seven robocall-related bills being examined at the House and Energy and Commerce Committee uh, that was that was looked at two weeks ago. So, again, lots going on to try to stop the you know the bad actor community and 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 to you know curb curb elite, uh, illegal spoofing. Stir shaking is one of those that that can help with that. And there's been some. There's been some news by the tier ones in, in that particular space. Uh, AT&T, Comcast have shown, and Verizon as well has shown, uh, you know, their ability to, uh, and T-Mobile as well, that they are, you know, authenticating and, and, and signing, and signing calls similar to the way, you know, HTTPS works today. Um, you know, when you're, when you're making a, a secure transaction on the internet. So how is TNS helping carriers leverage advanced data, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to address the robocall challenge? Yeah, so let me, let me take a step back and take a look at the data that we, that we see. About 30% of all the calls that we see in the network are nuisance and high risk. Uh, a nuisance call would be, um, you know, like a, a, a charity or, you know, a political survey, or it could be that I've given consent to a uh, call originator, and, you know, they continue to call me on, you know, promotional studies, et cetera. High risk is where, is, is really where, um, you know, callers are using deceptive call practices to, uh, to you know, fraudulently, you know, get their subscribe, you know, get end user subscribers to, uh, to give up, in, you know, personal information that then can be used for, for um, you know, the ill will gain of, of those bad actors. 
FCC's reported that there's about 9.5 billion um, happen every you know, every year. Uh, so, so what what does transaction network services do? We provide you know the analytics behind you know all of these all of these telephone calls for the leading you know like I said wireless and wireline carriers. Um, one of the things that we've seen is bad actors are continuing to you know change their tactics. That it's really like a game of of whack a mole. So there's something you know called neighbor spoofing, snowshoe spamming. Um, we have we have you know our AI and machine learning algorithms, um, you know, can, can spot that, you know, more accurately than, than, than others. And what neighbor spoofing is, is it's a, it's a tactic used by the, by the bad actor to make it look like it's coming from a phone number that's, that's, that's similar to, similar to yours. And then what snowshoe spamming is, is I do that over several different numbers so that I don't leave a footprint that makes it harder for the analytics companies like a, a, a TNS to, to, you know, to try to detect that bad, uh, you know, that bad actor. But we are seeing, you know, other things like, you know, spoofing of legitimate enterprise care numbers. So, you know, some technology companies are getting their numbers spoofed. Um, and, and they're, you know, they call out to, you know, their subscribers saying, hey, there's something wrong with your, with your information. You know, we need you to, uh, we need you to, um, you know, you know Update your update your ID or update your you know personal information, and then once they get that, then you know they they abuse that and then can use use that information. Uh, we're also seeing real number real mobile numbers being spoofed. Uh, that's that's you know a, a big issue in that in that let's say Doug, you know your number gets 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 hijacked or spoofed by uh, by a bad actor, and they make you know ten ten thousand you know fifty thousand a hundred thousand calls. Um, you know, pretending to be your number, uh, what's going to happen is, is there's going to be a reflective attack that, that comes back into, uh, into that, you know, into your number that says, you know, why were you trying to call me or why are you trying to, you know, deceive me? Why, you, you know, why are you, you know, you know, placing all these calls? And so, so we see about 20% of those that actually have their number hijacked, one in five, then get, then you know disconnect their number. So you know we're working with the carriers, uh, you know, to help help them identify that, help help them help them with their subscribers, you know, make their make their voice uh, their voice calls so that they they know that you know there's potential spam or potential fraud that could be uh, you know coming in on that call and to alert you know their end users uh, you know to to the risk so that they can if they're going to answer the call. That you know they'll they'll be on you know a much heightened alert than you know if it were just you know a regular call that were that were that were coming in. So beyond network data on robocalls, what role should crowdsource data play? Yeah, that's a great question. So you can't rely solely on the AI and the machine learning. We do use crowdsource data to help validate what the algorithm is learning, uh, and you know it's good to rely on the on the wisdom of the crowd if we have something wrong, for example, a false positive, we can use this, the data that, that we're getting from, from the crowd uh, to improve that. So, you know, we do have a team of data scientists that, you know, identify trends and can identify real-time spoofing and, and enhance, you know, the natural language processing of, of what we see in the crowdsource data to help us, you know, learn even more. But again, that crowdsource data, you know, really validates and confirms, um, you know, what you know what our algorithm is seeing, so that so that does help. And you do want to rely on the wisdom of the, the crowd beyond you know AI and you know machine learning. So it sounds to me like it's not just simply a consumer problem, although it certainly is a consumer problem. That businesses are also being impacted, and that it could have a, a an impact on everything from from reputation to dependability to even bottom line. That's right, Doug. So. You know, beyond consumers, enterprises are being impacted really in, you know, two different ways that, you know, the brands are being impacted when their numbers are spoofed by the bad actors. So, you know, technology companies or, you know, smaller companies, you know, if they get their numbers spoofed, uh, that, you know, would have a, you know, certainly a, a negative impact on them. Secondly, consumers aren't picking up the phone calls anymore. Uh, we've seen a, you know, a significant drop in the contact rates, you know, the call originators, would 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 subscribe to that as well if they've seen you know you know somewhere around a 20% drop in the 
drop. And so the productivity of their call center agents is certainly, certainly dropped. Um, it's harder to get, a, you know, harder to get a hold of somebody, you know, even on a legitimate business call. Um, I would, you know, the, the, the guy that won the Nobel prize actually didn't answer his, didn't answer the, uh, the call because he thought he was getting robocalls. He eventually called back later in the day, found out he won the Nobel prize. Well, that, that can certainly happen, you know, uh, you know, to you, uh, you know, let's say, you know, something happens to, you know, one of your children or your wife, um, you know, local hospital calls, you think that's a neighborhood spoof, uh, situation. So you're not going to pick up the call and then, you know, you've, you know, you've missed an important call that, that you really did want to receive. So, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing and, and working with a couple of tier two carriers is we're trying out, trialing a concept called branded calling that will give rich communications to the mobile handset. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, can display a logo. It can display other things, you know, that I'm, you know, I'm Home Depot and I'm, uh, as an example, and I'm, you know, calling about, you know, a recent order that you placed, or, you know, it could be that I'm Bank of America and, and, you know, I'm calling about, you know, a fraudulent transaction that I suspect on your, on your credit card. So, you know, you can get more context about why they're calling and who they're calling and, 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 you know, that rich communication that, that, that can come in that I'm sure that, you know, you've probably talked about, you know, in other podcasts can be brought to the realm of, of, of voice calling for, you know, certainly for the, for the mobile, mobile handset. So, um, you know, those are, that, that, so that's how, you know, you know, brands are being impacted and, you know, just as, just as, just as badly as, as consumers are being impacted. Although I think there's probably more, uh, there's more sympathy for the, for the consumer than there certainly is for, for, for the brand from a, from a legislative perspective. Now, Jim, earlier in the podcast, you mentioned stir shake. And so maybe you could explain to us, a little bit more about what it is and what it means to both the consumer and business community. Yeah, sure. So Sir Shaken is really a call authentication uh, solution where the originating provider uh, signs the call and then the terminating provider can, can validate that call using encrypted keys, sort of like, uh, you know, HTTPS today. So uh, when you're, you know, when you're making a transaction, you know, you see the little, you know, the, the little, uh, uh, logo or the little icon that says, you know, this is a secure transaction. Again, Chairman Pai really focused on the tier one to implement something this year. Uh, and we see, you know, 70, you know, almost 75% of the traffic from the tier ones, um, come from, you know, generate the volume of calls, but they really only see, we only see about 13% of the negative calls coming from them. So, um, so, with with stir shaken as we see the as we see that that starts to get implemented more by the tier ones, we think the bad actors will most likely shift the spoofing you know tier two tier three numbers. Uh, there's there's a couple of other things that, that stir shaken doesn't address, so it, you know it won't address the legitimate spoofing of enterprise numbers. So I know you've got call center uh, uh, folks that they're going to listen to the listen to the podcast. They're going to spoof you know legitimate numbers. Um, you know, so that they can, uh, you know, be the brand, you know, to call out. Well, uh, you know, that's a legitimate, legitimate case of, you know, stir shaking, you know, that could, could potentially, could potentially, uh, uh, fail. So, you know, again, uh, you know, we'll see the, we'll see the robocall solution, uh, improve as stir shaking gets more widely deployed in the U.S. The other thing is, is that, that within the SIP header, there's a, there's this concept of a, a, an origination ID that'll then help with the traceback efforts so that the FCC, the DOJ, uh, can then, you know, try to identify where that bad traffic is coming from. And, and then they can, you know, work with that particular, uh, provider to, you know, identify, you know, who the, who the originator of that particular call was. So, um, you know, Lots of good things I think will happen with stir shaking. Uh, you know, it'll be similar to, uh, similar to, you know, uh, uh, secure transactions that occur on the, on the internet today. So, um, you know, 10 years ago, you weren't sure what was happening with that. And, and, and now, you know, lots of transactions obviously happen over, 
over the internet. Same thing I think is going to happen with with stir shaking as it as it gets deployed. So I want to bring uh, TNS back into the picture here, Jim, and, and maybe you can explain to me how through this uh, type of environment you're steering your clients. Yeah, so you know TNS is is you know working again with the with the larger carriers to help them uh, with with stir shake, and that'll be just one more parameter that we'll use in our analytics engine to help us uh, to help help them help their subscribers understand what more of the intent of the call is. Uh, again, we we analyze you know billions of billions of call events, whether it be you know through SS uh, SS seven signaling. Whether it be through our, you know, network routing directory that we have, or our uh, LTE roaming hub that we provide um, for the Competitive Carriers Association, um, you know, more specifically when it comes to the CCA, uh, it's going to be more difficult for the tier two, tier three carriers to you know, implement this in a, in a timely fashion. So we've built a a hosted product we call Call Guardian Authentication Hub that can get them up and running and and have us signing and validating, uh, you know, the calls that, that, that are coming in, into and out of their, out of their network. Um, and it'll ultimately help the, you know, the larger carriers as well then be able to, you know, trust and, 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 and have those calls be, you know, validated by the, the larger carriers. So again, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to help the, the whole industry here with, with our, uh, with our robocalling solutions as well as other hub Hub solutions and other, uh, uh, you know, event call call event based solutions that, that we have, um, you know, that are available on on you know TNSI.com. And I understand you do have some other products that you're uh, working on to help uh, companies improve voice calling. Yeah, we do. So you know, I, I mentioned it briefly that that we have this concept called the LTE roaming hub. So. Uh, you know, if you're if you're roaming, you know, into a you know a smaller smaller area, you know, like you know Montana or you know where where Verizon or, or the big guys haven't necessarily, uh, uh, you know, built out network, uh, we allow that we allow that roaming you know to occur. Typically, a a large tier one carrier is not going to want to work with you know 40, 50 smaller carriers. So, you know, we bring the we bring the power of of, of that into into the uh, into the ecosystem, um, you know, we help them, you know, with their with their international terminations uh, as well. So we know, you know, you know, if 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 a if a smaller carrier uh, has a subscriber that wants to go to you know Mexico or to Canada or to the Caribbean, you know, they can continue to get those same rich services that they would expect in their in their in their local area. Um, extended out, you know, on an international basis. So we're continuing to build, you know, multilateral agreements, um, you know, through our roaming hub and, and, and through, uh, through those types of services that, that, um, you know, otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't happen. So Jim, you know, as we, as we close our, our podcast today, and thank you for a big overview on this huge topic of on robocalling um, and trying to mitigate robocalling, you know, I've been hearing some some people talking about stir shaking and the feeling that, gee, you know, maybe it's adding expense to the wrong side um, and that it'll, it will make some operations fairly difficult for some of the companies in our market. Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a valid concern, certainly for the for the tier two and tier three. We hear them talk about that, uh, you know, but, you know, again, 30 percent of the calls that they have that are traversing their network are negative calls. There's a certain number then, uh, you know, of that, about five percent of of the negative calls, you know, or calls that they could they could block block uh, that the FCC has given them permission to. So, you know, they could reduce their, you know, they could reduce their their trunk size. They could reduce the number of trunks. Um, so it could be a cost savings from that perspective. And then as they move into the mobile application world and, and give more control to the consumer, uh, I talked about branded calling. Those are additional revenue streams that that could help them, um, you know, offset you know some of the some of the costs to you know go implement. But again, it's it's a journey that they're that they're going to make. I would say you know start with universal call blocking, 
you know, move into, you know, the applications world and then move into, move into branded calling, um, you know, so that we can then, you know, restore trust back into the, uh, the voice, uh, voice ecosystem. Well, Jim, again, I want to thank you for joining me today and giving us a really nice overview on this topic and also some resources. Where can we learn more? So you can reach out to us uh, via solutions at knsi.com uh, via email, or, you know, you can certainly go to our website, www.tnsi.com, to learn more information about what we do in the in the telecom industry, we also have information in the you know, payments and in financial industries as well. Jim, I, I appreciate your time again, and I know we're going to be talking about this again in the future. Thanks so much, Doug. I appreciate being a part of the podcast today.